Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another weather forecast here by Age Weather the Forecast. This is going to be another tropical update here on the potential for maybe subtropical storm Arthur or maybe even tropical storm Arthur. We have major updates. Uh, these are actually like really, really big updates. We have a huge uh, difference compared to winds, vorticity, even the radar has completely changed. So we have major updates on this track and on really the strength of this system. So be sure to watch the whole video so you have as much and as new information as possible also please subscribe if you are new to the channel especially if you love tropical updates because at this hurricane season i'm going to be doing a lot of coverage especially since it's forecasted to be a lot more active and a lot, really a lot more in named storms i'm not too far from 2290 subscribers so please Hit the subscribe button and share the video to any friends or family as well as we can grow my channel. I really want to get to 2,300 by the end of the week. I think we can do it. So please, of course, share and subscribe. But without further ado, let's get this major tropical update. So the uh, NHC uh, has, or her, National Hurricane Center, has updated to, this to 70% chance, but that, they actually updated that yesterday. So we have now a high chance or high probability for formation within the next, within the next five days. We have a 0% chance for the next two days. This thing is most likely going to form in the next three days, so around the next 72 hours or around 66 hours, we can be seeing this form on May 16th. So it has delayed a little bit, but this is where we have our area for potential development. It seems like the area for de development has moved a bit more to the border of this system here. So this is this is this whole circle. It, this is where we have uh, really inside the circle where we have the best chance for for, for having this formation. And really, I think we can have this form most likely right here on the southern edge of this system or southern edge of this circle. And I think it could definitely get a lot closer to North Carolina than yesterday. It does seem that it has moved a bit more to the west, which could actually possibly impact the United States a lot more. Uh, SSTs haven't changed much. We still have these very cool waters uh, off the Atlantic or the U.S. coast. But where we have this, cir this circle for protective formation, we have very warm waters. Uh, average, so decently warm temperatures here up to around a degree or two above average there. But we do have very cold temperatures out here into the mid-Atlantic coast. So if it does get a lot closer and move to the west a bit more, it, that, it will obviously definitely weaken though uh, and fall apart a lot more because of these cooler waters there. Um, but that's what we're looking at there into the Carolina coast, those warm, those uh, cool uh, SSTs. But it does seem like we are having some warm spotches of a warm, a warm uh, uh, temperatures or warm SSTs uh, kind of popping up in the middle of those cold temperatures. So this does have three days, uh, really just have three days to warm up, even four days because it's going to form on May 16th. But it's going to take a couple of days to even get up to at this point. So it's we. this is obviously not going to look like, this is not going to obviously be the exact way it is now uh, when it's going to be moving this area. So if we can have these SSTs warm up in time, then we can definitely have a potential for a uh, really strong uh, formation there. If it obviously is not as dry as we as it looked. Here's the new GFS model, uh, the new model run earlier, uh, earlier this afternoon. Here we have this huge blob of all this moisture and all this, uh, this precipitation out here into the Bahamas. And then we'll most likely see it form, of course, by really it's either the end of May 15th or the beginning of May 16th is where we have this potential for formation. You're going to definitely be seeing a ton of rain for the Bahamas, the Northern Islands. Here's likely, likely where we do have this low pressure system right here. And you're going to be seeing these outer bands here. And we're going to be seeing all these bands across this low pressure system. This is definitely bringing a circular or cyclonic like formation. If you And if you look at the cloud cover, it seems that it's definitely going to be for May, uh, a circular formation. And May 16th, the next 72 hours, it's definitely had, we now have a defined low pressure system at 1,005 millibars. It's definitely bringing a really strong outer band across uh, this low pressure system there. I see that the worst of the system will be to the west, uh, where we have the, more of the, that more humidity there. And then it does seem, it does kind of, kind of just sits there a little bit into the, uh, off the coast of Florida. And it seems like it has gone a bit closer to the coast to uh, the Carolina, seems like it's getting a bit more, and moving a bit more to the west. Here we have this one-sided system, very little precipitation to the east of the low pressure system, and really most of the precipitation to the west of this low pressure system there. So very one-sided, and then we now switch sides. Now we're gonna be seeing this at 997 millibars. This is actually strengthening a lot more than we thought yesterday, or that it was showing yesterday. It was showing not really getting below a thousand millibars. 
and here it is showing getting a lot closer to the North Carolina coast. Here's where we're seeing these cooler waters right here. We're seeing all these cooler waters. If they do warm up, this could possibly strengthen the system uh, a lot more and strengthen this uh, low pressure system. And then it goes down to 994 millibars there. So definitely crazy system. Uh, seems like it's definitely strengthening a lot more than we than we thought yesterday. And it's at 994 millibars this time. It's going to be heading off into some, it's going to be really warm and cold spots across that part of the ocean. And it goes down all the way to 991 millibars. So definitely does strengthen it quite a good bit. But it does, it has gone a bit closer to the coast. But it does seem like they will, North Carolina will get spared. And so will the Mid-Atlantic coast, not getting any rain whatsoever based on this. Now the CMC here, the CMC is now showing it this low pressure system developing on May 16th. But... It's showing on the opposite side of opposite side of Florida, so this is obviously going to impact obviously Florida a lot more. Definitely bring a lot more rain and all that. Here we have all this precipitation to the northeast of the Bahamas, where we have that X, uh, that, uh, X, where we have the system developing. Look at this low pressure to them. Look how close it is to Florida. It's so close uh, to the coast of Florida, but look, it's one sided. So we have all the precipitation to the west of the uh, west of Florida. All because it, we have that drier air. And look at this. Look how close it gets now. This rain, this precipitation to the North Carolina coast. So I'm going to bring it uh, just based on the CMC. CMC does so it possibly bringing the outer bands off North Carolina. And then let's go uh, away into the Atlantic. And as we now look into the wind speed here. Uh, this is actually possibly made the biggest update so far. The wind speeds. And this is uh, 10 meters up in the uh, atmosphere. So obviously off the ground. So it's, this is actually like real time uh really like uh, these winds uh in the storm here we have this huge area this huge uh portion or uh section of really strong winds out there wind gusts in the north northern bahamas and then we have this low pressure system right here on may 16th we have a huge strong wind area would possibly bring up to 30 knots uh sorry 32 knots uh up there and by may later may 16th the next 72 hours this thing is definitely formed and we're possibly see 36 plus knots. So definitely seeing all these strong winds here surrounding the low pressure system. That's as it does move off the Florida coast, and then it does actually bring it even stronger winds, possibly up to 36 to 37 knots, which is a lot stronger than we thought we previously thought. And then it does it does completely strengthen out to 900 999 millibars. It does drop. Uh, it does drop, I believe, four millibars, and now we are seeing up to 40 knots. So this is definitely a lot stronger than we thought it was going to be. And this is not a high, very high in the atmosphere. This is like real-time winds, uh, like not far from off the ground. And look at how defined this is. We have very little winds in that so-called eye. And here we have the eye wall right here. Paul's going to bring it 40 to 44 knots there. And then it seems to be uh, strengthening to 994 millibars, bringing those very strong winds, possibly right here, maybe even bringing up to 48 knots. That is absolutely crazy there. So based on this, we can possibly have 50 to 55 mile per hour wind gusts, which is a lot stronger than we actually previously thought when the system has yet to have, when we yet that, when, before we had that circular uh, before the uh, North National Hurricane Center put that uh, potential uh, for formation, it was only showing up to 39 miles per hour, really maximum. Now it's showing up to 50 to 55 miles per hour. And of course, this is not going to bring in the strongest winds on the coast, which is it's crazy because how much it's strengthened, how much it, it seemed to strengthen a lot. And look at this 991 millibars. And look at these very powerful wind gusts here. It's possibly uh, for this system. Actually, that's way too far off. Um, uh, that's actually still way too far off, but see, still going to be seeing those really strong winds there. Now let's go ahead and check out the vorticity. So the vorticity is basically that cyclonic rotation, so just the rotation, the atmosphere, and all that. We have a huge area right here of circular vorticity out there of, off the big island, the Bahamas, and then that's where we'll be seeing that low pressure system. Really, you want to see it. You want to see these really dark red colors for a lot of vorticity. Not only do you want to see that, but you want to see that in a circular rotation. Like you kind of want to see what it, what it would look like on satellite imagery, but obviously just vorticity uh, signatures. Here we had the low pressure system right here. Here you had the circular rotation. Here we had the circular rotation. So you want to see you want to see these outer bands like that stretching that have rotation with that low pressure system uh, right in the middle there with a the strong with those outer band or those uh, wall uh, those um eye walls. And then you see we have a huge huge signature of vorticity when it strengthens really on may 18th seems like it'll be a monster 
potential tropical storm, if not subtropical storm, and we'll definitely see a ton of vorticity. It's going to be absolutely crazy. If you guys actually, let's go ahead and see exactly why this is actually going to be, um, why this is possibly going to be a, um, a one-sided system here, if I can actually find it, the humidity. So basically, the reason why it's going to be one-sided so basically here on May 15th and May 16th, look at all of this moisture. Of course, you want you want to have a lot of moisture in the atmosphere for a tropical system to develop and that's going to be the atmosphere. You want you want the atmosphere to be very moist uh, for to favor really a tropical or cyclonic system. Look at all of this moisture and that's exactly why it forms. It forms right in the middle of all that moisture. But as we now move later into the May 17th, when it's one side, a uh, lopsided or one sided, look, the, low, the east of the low pressure system is very dry, which is exactly why we didn't have any precipitation there. And then we have all the precipitation to the west or to the north, because that's where we have all the moist, uh, the moist air. And then the reason why it does become a lot strength, it, the reason why it strengthens a lot more and becomes a lot bigger and it, the low pressure system strengthens is because it has its own own section of moist air uh, avoiding all that dry air. So that's exactly why it is one-sided for those people who are wondering. And then let's go ahead and check out now the, quickly the wind shear here. I actually forgot to pull up the wind shear, so I'm going to go ahead and check it out right here if we can actually find it. Um, I forgot to actually pull this up. So um, let me go ahead and see if we can pull this up. So for those people who don't know the tropics, really, if you have a lot of wind shear, it that's going to minimize the, the probability of this tropical system either to form or of strengthening. So basically it's the opposite with severe weather. Severe weather, uh, really, um, the wind shear strengthens and increases the possibility for severe weather, while it does the opposite for uh, it does the opposite for tropics. So here we have all this wind shear surrounding this. It's going to be a little trough. Here we have this one little area right here where it does develop that low pressure system. It's a perfect scenario to have a tropical system to develop. And here we have very little wind shear. We are going to be seeing obviously wind shear, but very little wind shear compared to where the, the where the atmosphere is like surrounding it. We're going to be seeing a ton of wind shear to the south and to the north. If any, if it does wind shear strengthen at any moment like that, then it will definitely fall apart. And that's exactly why we see it strengthening here because we have very little wind shear. Here you see that very little wind shear in that little center of the system because that is the eye. And then that's where it strengthens to 984 millibars and then falls out. But if it if it formed any later, which it obviously wouldn't have because the atmosphere would have been uh, really unfavorable. And if it would have if, if it would have been right here in this wind shear, it would definitely would have fallen apart. You would have been seeing this something just, just these millibars drop a lot. Now, if we look into the precipitation here, you're going to be seeing, you can basically just tell the cone, how just based on the precipitation. So you're going to be seeing this cone right here. This is where it's going to be moving right here once it develops around right here. Here you're going to be seeing up to a foot of rain north of Cuba, up to 10 to 12 inches of rain. And then this little cone, we're going to be seeing 4 to 7 inches and possibly in the island of the northern islands of the Bahamas can be seeing six to seven inches of rain. And let's go ahead and check out Ventusky. This is actually, I forgot to actually use in the previous videos, but this is going to be showing you basically the winds here. Of course, this is 10 meter wind as well. So this is 10 meters above ground here by 1 a.m. on the 16th. We're going to be seeing, uh, you're going to be kind of seeing this little area of uh, kind of all this rotation, all this winds moving this way. So it's, like I said, one sided. And the strongest winds will possibly be already at 37 miles per hour, which need 39 miles per hour to have a tropical storm. But this would most likely be a subtropical storm. As we now move later into around 3 a.m., we see we start to see these winds uh, strengthening a lot more, but it's very unorganized and one sided. But as we now move in 6 a.m., here we have that low pressure and that uh, actually finally formed, and that's where we see the strongest winds on that uh, the outside of that low pressure system, and you finally see these winds reaching the other side of the low pressure system. So now. Now, finally, we have a circular like system right here forming around 6 a.m. Going to be seeing some decent sh the wind gusts right here in the center, uh, possibly up to 30 or even 40 plus mile per hour wind gusts, or not wind gusts, winds. And then, as we now move to 11 a.m., it seems to be a lot more organized, but winds do die down a little bit. Here we have the low pressure system right here. Here we have these very strong winds, all that vorticity and all that rotation there that we need, obviously, to see a system. Uh, going to be seeing around 33 miles per hour. Going to be sitting here uh, getting close to 36 miles per hour there. As we now move to 2 p.m., we have a bit of a strengthening of winds here out there into both sides. It's not going like, to be as it's worse winds, but we are going to be seeing strong winds now on both sides of this low pressure system. And by 8 o'clock, this system really does strengthen quite a bit. 
and then by five o'clock we see a very strong wind on the on the second on the opposite side. This is where it looks. This is where it looks like a, a, a tropical system at its best. Here we have the low pressure system, and we have the strongest wind, of course, on the outer on the outer walls there of the of, on the eye. Here we'll be seeing very very strong wind gusts or sorry winds. Uh, for this first system in this point in this time of the year gonna be getting close to eight uh, 40 miles per hour as we get moved later on to 8 p.m. and then 11 uh, Here we have all that circular rotation, but of course it's not gonna be seeing those extreme Hurricane wind gusts of course because it's not gonna be hurricanes it's a tropical storm uh, So tropical storm likely as we get more into now the 17th later in the day You're gonna continue to see these strong winds and this is where we get that strongest on the 17th gonna be seeing now up to 45 miles per hour winds uh, possibly reaching 50 mile per hour wind gusts and or winds not wind gusts and that's going to continue on into the 18th going to continue to see very strong winds now here we're going to be seeing now up to 50 plus mile per hour winds going to be seeing 51 52 uh, this is absolutely crazy how it's going to bring these uh, it's going to it's going to strengthen a ton in that part and now look at this right here now we're seeing very powerful winds going to possibly get 55 uh, 55 miles per hour uh, it's gonna be really crazy right here. So this is definitely gonna be a lot stronger than all of us thought. And look how strong these winds are now. Look at the flow pressures and all these strong winds now, vort vorticity and all that rotation and strong winds, 54 miles per hour, 55 up to possibly 56 miles per hour. And then even by the later the 19th by eight by uh, 11 o'clock, we're gonna possibly see now uh, getting close to 60 miles per hour, gonna be 57 miles per hour. Uh, gonna get really really strong wind gusts. This is gonna be or not winds gusts I always want to say wind gusts strong winds and this is obviously possibly by the 19th It's gonna kind of weaken as it does uh, Kind of go to cooler waters, but definitely you see some very strong winds though possibly 60 plus mile per hour wind winds and that does move later on we're gonna be seeing this thing strengthen it's gonna be absolutely crazy with uh, Getting 70 mile per hour winds I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please do not forget to like and subscribe, and bye, guys.